Hey guys, so in this video, I thought I could walk you through the lifting line theory that we've been talking about in class. Um, again, this, not, this video is not going to be very long. It's going to be very short, but you know, the main idea is that I convey the importance of lifting line theory and how it was derived. Um, and then in class, we can go over the application of lift distribution or the thin airfoil theory to an elliptical lift distribution. All right. Okay. It's a very easy to understand, um, so despite all the math that is that's in there. So when you go through this video, just have the handout on your side, and then if you can fill through the equation as you go along, that will be great. All right? So again, last time in class, we left off with this, um, you know, this, this, this uh, mathematical model for downwash, right? So what, what we started out with this BS of our law, that predicts the velocity distribution or velocity induced by a vortex filament, um, you know, like, like these vortex filaments um, that kind of extends to infinity, right? So, you know, we saw that by definition of cross product, the B of Savala reduces down to this expression right here. Um, and then we convert it all to polar coordinates to make integration easier. And then we ended up with that, right? And solving this integral kind of gives you, uh, kind of gives you gamma by four pi h. So now there was a discussion about you know, whether or not this should be positive or negative, right? Mathematically, from this analogy or from this expression, um, you get a positive uh, velocity. Now that's okay because what you know. What this represents is the magnitude of the velocity, right? I mean, depending on where you place the point here, you're gonna get velocity in multiple directions, right? That's you know that that's true, right? Because when you look at the uh, um, thin the elementary vortex uh, model, right, you get v theta is gamma by two pi r. Um, Right, so you don't get a sense of whether that theta is negative or positive, you just get the magnitude, right? So, and if it is negative, then all it means is that spinning in the opposite direction, right? So same analogy can be applied here that, you know, velocity induced is on, on different directions will be gamma by four pi h, right? Again, that just introduces, that just means that it's a velocity magnitude and that doesn't have any, um, you know, directions assigned to it, right? And that we can assign it later because when you look at the velocity uh, or induced by the vortex in inboard, then we know that it's going to be um, velocity in here. So we know it's going to be negative, right? All right. So now what we are doing here is that we take that point P in the previous model and drag it all away and put it on top of the bound vertex, right? So we put the point right here because all we're trying to do is we're gonna try to figure out what is the influence of these tip vortices uh, on the bound vertex itself, okay? So say consider a point right here, uh, it can be y naught or you know, it's some distance say y from the center line, right? So. All we're trying to do is figure out what the downwash is uh, at this point from the left wing tip vortex or left trailing vortex here and then the right trailing vortex here, right? So we know that in the previous slide, we saw this expression downwash induced by the velocity by the vortices is gamma by four pi h. But in this case, h is b by two minus y, correct? b by two minus y. On the right, the, um, you know, the distance in the h is b by 2 plus y, correct? So that's what you get right here. Um, so the total downwash induced by at that point on both, you know, on that point by both of these trailing vortices is basically a summation of these two, right? So you got the downwash induced by the left trailing vortex and the downwash induced by the right trailing vortex. Oh, no, this is downwash induced by the right, right trailing vortex. And downwash induced by left trailing vortex. Okay, notice that the negative sign appears here because you know we're only considering considering area over here in this area, right? But when you look at this, 
right? And you can solve for this, uh, take you know, common uh, denominators, right? So you get this expression, b by b square by b by two, b by two square minus y square, right? So let's think about what this represents. You know, there's something off about this expression for downwash, right? So just pause here and let, you know, just think about what's wrong with this model. Um, well, if you had, you know, if, if, you had, if you had thought that, hey, look look at this, uh, when you look at this distribution, when you solve for um, y, or when you solve for the, um, you know, wy downwash, you're gonna get a constant downwash throughout, right? Because your circulation is not changing, right? So in reality, on a finite wing, um, you will get what you know. You get a distribution, right? You get a lift distribution, and not a constant lift. So now this is what Randall you know, faced with that. You know, he he needs to develop a way to dis distribute the bound vortex, um, or create a circulation distribution without violating Helmholtz or you know Kel uh, Kelvin's law, right? So that's kind of the birth of the theoretical model of lift distribution and it's, it's it's a very ingenious thing that Pranel did um, that you know we know that for a for a wing um, if this is the horseshoe lift distribution you know we cannot we cannot change the gamma along this bound vortex you know Kelvin's theorem does not allow us to do that so what he thought you know what he thought was hey what if you superimpose another horseshoe vortex and another Hershey vortex, and you keep on doing this, right? Now, when you do this, if you look at the net circulation on the bound vortex line, right? So that's lift due to the gamma one, right? And now in this area, you get gamma one plus gamma two, and then in this area, you get gamma one plus gamma two plus gamma three, right? Now, if you have multiple lift distributions, I mean multiple horseshoe vortices in here, then you can sort of create that distribution that you want, right? And that's exactly what Prana did, and this line is actually called the lifting line, right? And this is a, you know, it's a picture from Anderson. Uh, so you have multiple of these horseshoe vortices that kind of creates this distribution that you're looking for. So now gamma is no longer a constant, gamma is a function of the span of the wing, right? With the maximum circulation being gamma naught right here, right? So now we broke this constant circulation to a circulation distribution. Mathematically, it can be given by this formula, right? D gamma by dy times dy. Um, that's basically your D gamma, right? Just multiply and divide dy in it. So it's all great. Um, but now we got to adapt the uh, adapt the downwash equation to accommodate uh, the circulation distribution, right? So let's start here. To consider an arbitrary location, why not? This is our point of interest, right? Um, so we know that instead of having one uh, trailing board or two trailing vortices, you have like infinite trailing vortices right now. Um, so that means you know any segment of the trailing vortex dx will induce the velocity at y naught. You know that that makes sense, right? All of these guys are going to induce some some velocity at y naught. Um, you know. So now, if you want to find the entire um, induced velocity, just you know, due to all of these infinite. Uh, training vortices, then we have to integrate, right? So we have to find the dx um, locations at each and every y, each and every y location, which is along the span, and find what its influence is on y naught. So again, let, let, let me let me make this a little bit more clear, right? So again, we are looking at this point of interest right here, and Basically, every single line will induce a velocity at y naught. Now, the address of each trailing line is located by just the you know just the y, right? So that's y is our coordinate system along the span of the wing. So that means when we look at the difference between y and y naught, we can understand how 
you know, what's the distance between or what's the influence of the trading vortices at the given Y location on Y naught, right? Hope that makes sense. So that means, you know, we just adapt the downwash equation. So this is still gamma by four pi H that we that we got from BU sub R, but now our gamma is no longer a, a constant, it's a distribution. And then our H is, we're not looking at just one point, it's a function of Y, right? So when you, you know, you're finding the distribution or the downwash induced by the trailing vortices on on all the Y locations on Y naught, right? Hope that makes sense, right? So right, right now our Y naught is fixed, right? So now if you want to find the entire distribution, well, you just integrate from negative B by two to positive B by two, right? So it's the same equation, that's what you get, okay? So one, just one more thing left, which is, you know, you got, we got to find a way to type all of this downwash and angle of attack and lip distribution together, right? And you know, to do that, we can rely on just basic you know, definition of what induced angle of attack is, right? So as we know, induced angle of attack, uh, we talked about this in class, is the tan inverse of the downwash divided by the infinity, right? Well, as with any case, we make a small angle assumption, right? So you get minus uh, W, why not by the infinity? Now we do. We just derive the downwash equation, right? So we just plug that in here. Now look at that. We got an expression for induced angle of attack. Now all you need is a gamma, right? If you know what gamma you want, then you can figure out what the induced velocity uh, or induced angle of attack at that given location will be, right? Which is again pretty cool. Uh, so now we have the airfoil section located y equal to y naught, right? So that means that the CL at a given y naught location can be represented by two pi alpha effective minus alpha L naught, because say in just in case you have a cambered airfoil, so you gotta use this equation, right? So using the equation of lift and Kurochikowski theorem, we can write lift per unit span is uh, you know, rho times V infinity times gamma, why not, right? The expression for CL, um, you know, just bring everything to the other side and cancel the common terms. So you get two gamma not, two gamma at Y naught divided by VC times the chord at Y naught location. So substituting, you know, this expression back into the equation, you get, you know, basically you're equating these two so all you're doing is solving for alpha effective then. So when you do that, the alpha effective just becomes gamma at y naught divided by pi v infinity c or chord at y naught plus alpha L equal to zero, right? Now we know that any given angle of attack or just any geometric angle of attack equals the effective angle of attack plus the induced angle of attack, right? Now the effective angle of attack is given by this expression right here, uh, again, which is great. And then the geometry, the induced angle of attack is given by the expression we saw before, right? So put them all together and that's it. So this is the fundamental equation for Prandtl's lifting line theory. Again, all this is, is predicts what the effective angle of attack is and what's the induced angle of attack is. It's pretty ingenious. And you know, you can, let's just think about what this equation conveys, right? So again, notice, notice that you have alpha at y naught. So that means you're solving this equation for one single point along the span, okay? So you won't get the alpha or you won't get the desired lift distribution altogether at once. You're going point by point, right? Oh, that makes sense. So you solve for alpha at one y naught location and then you move on to the other location. So that means you put this in the, you put the entire equation in a loop in order for you to get the lift distribution or the geometric angle of attack that you want, okay? So um, what, the, what we're gonna do in class um, next time is that, you know, we'll take, you know, there are two, you know, we'll, the, we'll start with 
a distribution that we want. Say, you know, you are looking to create a wing um, with a certain lift distribution and you don't know what angle of attack you need to place the wing at to get that lift distribution, right? So how do you know what, you know, say you want to create a lift distribution, something like this. Uh, I didn't write very well, so, or something, something like this, right? So how do you create, how do you change the angle of attack in a way that you create the lift, lift distribution? Well, Brando's lifting line theory will get you that, which is pretty cool, um, right? So that's what we're gonna do, in, um, you know, next time in class, right? So, all right, we'll continue this. And, uh, you know, if you can fill, that, fill the handout uh, up to this point, that would be great. We'll do a quick refresher and then we'll uh, march on to uh, the exciting thing of predicting the geometric angle of attack. All right.